Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Doctors of Running Virtual Roundtable, where we three doctors of physical therapy discuss the art and the science to the stuff that we're putting on our feet. Today, we are really glad to have Len Hand joining us. He's the founder of uh, Hand Shoes. And um, there's some really exciting things. If you have not heard about his story, you can check out their stuff on Kickstarter as well as there, he's been able to do a myriad of interviews. One of them was with Sam Weinbaum of Road Trail Run. They talk about the origin stories of this and kind of where the idea was inspired. Um, we're not going to dive into that stuff today. What we get to do with Len is really dive into what was the mechanical inspiration kind of the engineering behind it, some of the biomechanics, and then the research that he's able to do. So, Len, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, guys. Uh, Nathan, thank you so much for having me on. It's a real pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, let's, uh, let's start a little bit. Len, if you just want to give us a, a quick overlay of the inspiration for the shoe in terms of its mechanics... Um, David's got the shoe held up for, for those who are watching on YouTube. So give us a little bit of kind of the, the mechanical inspiration for this and, and that kind of thing. I have the other one. Okay. So oh, perfect. <laughs> the, the, so the mechanical inspiration, okay. That, that word is, is in essence what this is all about. Um, if you, if you look at foam, okay. You know, like, like any shoe foam, the problem with, with foam, and, and this came out of my discussions with Benno once we got there, once he started grilling me about, you know, why are you doing this, Len? You know, um, the problem with foam is that it's soft and soft and then it's hard. You know, it bottoms out. And, and the clever thing about, you know, like the, the minimalist shoes is that there's very little bottoming out to do. They're already, they're already flat. And the clever thing about the maximalist shoes is that they're keeping you in the soft, soft range, you know? And it's that middle ground where you actually do get a bottoming out effect that makes a, a, a foam shoe really so detrimental. I, I taught marathoners how to run for 17 years with Chicago area runners as a pace group leader. And the thing that we had to struggle with the most was finding shoes that worked for people. You know, when they started at six miles, and then ramped all the way up to 20 over the course of a summer. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us um, a little bit about, I mean, you, you referenced uh, Benno. So for those who don't know, Benno is probably, if you ran in a running shoe, he's had a, probably had a, uh, an influence on the shoe that's been developed. He um, is phenomenal in what he does and has been really influential um, in that Matt obviously is probably the most acquainted with him um, of the three of us. And uh, only by the amount of say, the fact that I've pretty much read every single study he's ever done. We're trying to get contact <laughs> with him. Which, um, so he's basically just the OG or the father, a lot of, of footwear uh, research and biomechanics. And even today still is yeah. writing and contributing. He's got a great group up at, I believe it's university of Calgary that they just, they put some awesome, Workout and there and now his proteges are working with companies all over the world. So even Asics has one of his proteges, and he's still working with people and doing research. I forget how old he is. He's he's up there, but he's still cranking stuff out. So he's definitely one of those the fathers of this. He he he, yeah. he babysat Yoda when Yoda was in short pants. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Little Grogu. So, so Len, tell us about what your experience was like there in his in his lab, what kind of tests were you able to do with your, with your footwear? Okay. So, so after, and, and, and I don't know if I ever showed you this, but okay. So I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit when we got into suspension and I started by researching, I started just by writing off for, for papers. And I saw a paper, the, the, the famous paper from Benno on muscle tuning. And I sent him a, a stamped, envelope saying, hey, can you send me that muscle tuning paper? And included a note, you know, well, if you want this one, you're going to want these five others. And, and I started a library of, of research papers and then went from that into studying materials, went from that into studying um, more first principles. There's a lot of first principles and why this is what it is. And then once we got into um, composites, okay, into, into actual suspension designs, um, that's when I was able to run my first full marathon in the hand-built shoe, you know, 
the with with you know the 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 early the early vestigial hinge you know um but the the full suspension and actually wow. what if i told you this see the see the blue of the hinge right yeah. that same blue is in my thumb when i ran my thumb to the table saw three days before the marathon as i was oh my God. this thing seriously yeah and so that's you know, a and so I got, I went and got it, you know, cleaned out, and they stitched it up, and there was a big bandage on it. Three days later, I ran the Chicago Marathon with this shoe, and cut. Okay, here's here's the here's the 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 secret sauce. Okay, and cut 15 minutes off my previous nine marathon PR of of 438, a mid pack slow kind of guy, but. 438 in nine marathons cut 15 minutes off 6% down to 423. That's awesome. Yeah. What, what a pun that you cut your almost cut your finger off and then also cut time off of your marathon time. Uh, yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's yeah. like, you know, I, it's, it's, it's the one tattoo I have. My, yes. my cable saw tattoo. This shoe really <laughs> is blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, no kidding. That's awesome. So, yeah. And so when we got there to see Benno, okay. Um, you know, we went from this shoe to um, the biomechanical test shoe, okay? And I was calling the company EMA for Energy Management Athletics at the time. And my <laughs> oldest daughter is Emma. Oh, so, there you go. Oh, that's I, cool. I know, right? Um, anyway, so we, we ran these shoes in Benno's lab. And when we got there, you know, all the guys, you know, the, 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 the Santa's elves, you know, <laughs> that Benno has, um, they're like, what are we doing? I'm like, oh, we're going to run, you know, a, a comparative oxygen, you know, systemic oxygen study. And they're like, oh, okay, you know, if we have to. And I'm like, what? What's the matter? And they're like, well, you think you're going to see a difference, right? And I go, yeah, you know, I think I'm going to see a difference. And they're like, you're not going to see a difference. You know, 0.1, 0.2%, you know, it's hard to move that needle. And I'm like, well, how do you reduce systemic oxygen consumption? Assumption. And they, they said, oh, that's easy. Get off the treadmill and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it, you know. And I'm like, well, no, let's try the shoe. And we did try the shoe. And they actually had to recheck the numbers because we cut 2.2%. Very nice. Systemic oxygen yeah. consumption in steady state running with a whole group of runners, same day, same treadmills, you know, two different kinds of shoes. What we're can we, and if if we ask questions that we that you can't answer, like we or like you're, you know, it's releasing information about your studies. So like if if there's stuff we ask that you're like, eh, let's oh, not talk about that. That's fine. Um, how many runners did you have in that in that study, and um, kind of where they come from, and then what were your comparative shoes? Like what was the other shoe that you used to compare? Okay, so the the I think we had, I think we had ten runners. And they were all University of Calgary athletes and students and, and uh, human performance lab, you know, volunteers, whatever they had. I mean, there were, yeah. there, were fast, there were fast people running seven minutes on the treadmill and there were people running, you know, 11. So they would pick their, their steady state pace. Like, oh, hey, yeah. I run at, I usually run at whatever for this yeah. kind of all, a run. All they, this, was, all they had to be was regular runners that, you know, had some experience and were, we're able to hold a steady pace. Okay. That's yeah. fairly standard, by the way, is it having, having runners self-select uh, their own running pace yep. to get their natural mechanics. Yeah. So that's very, that's, that's fairly normative. And then that's the great. comparison shoe was a, um, it was a, a high end new balance shoe at the time. Okay. You no, know, I forget which model it was, but you know, a, a marathon, a lightweight marathon trainer. Yeah. Kind of shoes. So not something cool. like a 1080 now, probably a little lighter, or one of their like premium cushion models. I don't know if you remember. What's the what's the urethane one? The 993. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't that. It, it wasn't, wasn't that. that. Yeah, it wasn't the 990, which is now 95. No, it was. I think. It, I th okay, so this one from that era is a 763. I think oh, it was okay, like whatever it. the current version of that was. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah. And the, the way, the reason they picked that was it was a shoe they had, they had like, they did a little survey of all the test group runners and it was a shoe they could all agree that they liked. It's interesting. Okay, cool. 
<laughs> was there, those, uh, that was going to be one of my questions if your comparison was what they were already running in versus a different shoe compared to the hand shoe or if it was one that they all wore together and it just kept yeah, it consistent they, they, there. they all wore the same control shoe and then they okay. all wore our shoe this, this okay. is really hard cool. for those of you listening this is the really hard part about doing footwear research is trying to find shoes that will work for all of your test subjects which also can get really expensive if people have fancy tastes and find it, and then being able to control weight and stiffness and all, it is not easy. Footwear research is really hard to do. So kudos to you, Len, if you're able to standardize that, because that is not, that's not super common. They, they, a lot of, they, they, actually, yeah. they actually went through several different shoes, trying everybody on until oh. they arrived at a shoe that, that they liked. I'm not wow, surprised Ben cool. is, has this did, down to it. This is Ben Onig, so of course he knows this. Of course he has this down to his science. You, <laughs> yeah. Did you have to modify that that? New Balance shoe at all, or like did it just stick weight? as it was? And it, it was it was the shoe the way it came out of the box. Cool, that's great. Okay. They all got to keep. Them. That's so. awesome. <laughs> where are you <laughs> always I mean, variables I, such as <laughs> where, where you're looking at variables such as like weight and drop ratio and comparisons between the shoes from a static measurement versus dynamic. Um, I believe we did. Okay, so some of this. I believe we, I believe we, if the weight was different by a certain percentage, then we did, then we did some weight normalization. Okay. Just yeah. not a comment. Cool. You can put like metal seeds. You were trying, to, we were trying yeah. to keep it as apples to apples as possible, but right. I, I know we, we didn't have to add, you know, hardly any weight, but to a few pairs of shoes. That's lucky. Yeah. And we put yeah, it right great. under the sock liner. Oh, perfect. Yeah, oh, nice. Good oh, so it's, it's a good distribution of it. Yep. Mass centralize it. Yep. Yes. Good idea. Yep. Cool. What was it? What this is more of a personal question. What was it like working with with Benno in in a process like that? You kind of referenced some of it, where you know he's like, "Well, you're going to need all of these studies too before well, so, you know." So, 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 I I am an engineer, an electronics engineer, and I've been doing. I did telecommunications most of my career. And so, you know, I'm used to large, expensive, complex lab situations, but a physiology lab, you know, is a whole different animal, you know. Um, and so it was really fun. It was really pretty cool because um, they really did have well thought out methodology. They had right. really detailed methodology. They had uh, a plan for, for everything. And, you know, when everyone got going on the on the the treadmills and we're walking along reading the numbers you know um and then you know there were there were there were whiteboards where we had written down the you know the i think it was the mean numbers for each runner and then as the numbers were coming in we're posting the numbers there was some real disbelief it's like well mm -hmm. this is a 0.1 or 0.2 percent off this is 2.2 percent lower right and, and that was with a far earlier version of the shoe than we have now so I would love to do this again. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Like, what, I, think, um, I think we might be pushing three now, you know? Right, right. Uh, I had another question that just is totally escaping me. Um, had to do with, you go. For, for those, this is more of a, a, but, a comment. For those who I think are not. You want me to go how this works? We, we, we should do how we should definitely go through that. Uh, my comment is, well, before that, and while Nathan's thinking, is that for those who aren't as uh, well-versed in some of the literature on this, the concept of muscle tuning is that when you land, the impact force causes a certain, a certain vibration through the musculoskeletal system. And what you have to realize is that certain frequencies will actually line up better with certain people and certain off frequencies there's, there's, it's suspect to be a risk for injury specific, specifically in the tendons actually. And there's some more evidence coming out in the, in the actual muscles themselves in terms of how the fi fibers vibrate and all that kind of stuff. This is not something that this, this has been known, but not really addressed until recently. So Len with, with the ellipses and the suspension is a, is a great way of doing this. There's been some other companies who have been trying different foams to try to attenuate this. So um, Solomon is one of them. Uh, I know Simon Bartold worked with them for a long time on this concept with uh, muscle tuning, but it's still something that's being 
developed and researched. And again, it's the concept that, yeah, believe it or not, there's a frequency of impact that's unique to each person. And you want to try to match that frequency of the shoe with your muscles. And that's not exactly an easy, you can't just look that up. It's not exactly the most easy right. thing to figure out. So that's what makes there's it. There's other interesting stuff too yeah. with compression as well. Like all kind of looking at muscular vibration and its attenuation over like a certain duration of time and how that affects, you know, well, quantitative things. The way Benno explained it, he was saying that, you know, you have to be able to deliver a, a, an energy return of a sufficient magnitude to make a difference at the right location and at the right timing. You know, and he said, that's, he said, that's like getting, you know, three cherries on the slot machine lining up, then you get the jackpot. Right. Yeah. And, and we hit the jackpot. Right. And for, and for other people who have brains like mine, that when you talk about like attenuation and all this stuff that just, that one way that I conceptualize it is if like I was pushing my son on, on a, on like the swing, he's one and a half right now, like I'm one of those baby swings. And if I push him at the right time, he's going to start swinging higher. So that would mean that I'm not attenuating the force. I'm actually exacerbating it or making it stronger, um, which in swinging obviously is what you want to do. Attenuating the force would mean that my force coming back at the swing would be at the same time that would help him to stop so that there wouldn't be excess uh, swinging happening. The ideal scenario is that you wouldn't have all of these vibrations happening. And so you want to attenuate force by hitting, you know, you don't want to make the swing go higher and higher and higher. Every time you want to hit it at the point that uh, keeps things from going uh, further. So that's one way to maybe think about it. Or if you've had your, if you've been uh, putting laundry in your washing machine and it all like lumps on one side and then the whole thing starts going crazy. Um, that's not what you want. You want it to be distributed in a way that it decreases all of that uh, vibration. So attenuating it, uh, in the muscles now is obviously different, but that's kind of the concept that we're talking about. Oh, we got a cat visitor over by Matt over there. For a half <laughs> second, I thought that was your finger. I was like, what are you doing, man? I thought he was coming up with another example of attenuation. No, it's the cat walking by. <laughs> Get uh, well, Len, why don't you tell us about yeah. how your shoe works? Tell us, tell us about how the shoe works, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so having gone through, yeah, there you go. Having gone through, um, having gone through all the research, and I would love to get into a, a lengthier conversation about what we actually discovered, the 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 first principles. But we'll we'll do that another time. Having gone through that, and then having gone through um, some prototypes, some high volume air. Did I show you the high volume air last time? I don't think you did. I don't think so. Okay, so I, I, I liked the compression of gas, okay, the properties of gas compression. And I was thinking, well, how about high volume air? But as soon as you do that, now you've got to look at the, at the container stretch, you know, and is there a damping from that? All of, anyway, so bikes work pretty well. Bikes, bikes, you know, bikes are a highly efficient um, high volume air device. Well, I put an inner tube into a, t into a shoe. You did show us this. Yeah. Okay. And so, and so, you know, and, and, and there's the, there's the inflator, right? Um, and I ran a couple 10 Ks in this, you know, if, if I put it right at about 17 pounds, it actually worked really well, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, so I went through high volume air. I went through, you know, materials and structures kind of combined like half racquetballs glued to a shoe, okay, that, that actually in certain configurations really didn't feel bad. It felt okay. It worked okay. I ran a couple 10Ks in those too. Um, but then we got into the suspension and what I'm holding up is, is an ellipse. This is my second gen suspension. And you can hear, you know, it's like a musical instrument almost, and you can't even squeeze it with your fingers but when you stand on it, it's very smooth, you know, very long travel, okay? Like on the heel, we're looking at 14 millimeters of travel. Um, and when you land on this, and our, our Kickstarter, our Kickstarter page has a really lovely slow motion video of the shoe articulating through the stride, 
if you go to the Kickstarter page. And if you go to our main page, handshoes.com, there's a link to the Kickstarter. That's the easiest way to get to it. When the, when the heel suspension deflects, okay, and your center of gravity, which is right behind your belly button, starts moving over the center of the shoe, then the heel extends, okay, and there's a lot of force stored in there, a lot of energy that extends. And as it extends, kind of like a teeter-totter, it preloads the forefoot. The forefoot is deflecting downwards before you even get there. It's the energy from the heel. And you've done the, you've done the holy grail of footwear. You've transferred landing energy to the, to the toe off. And then as, you're, as, you're the, as the ball of the foot starts to roll up, the metatarsals and the hinge activates, it, it kind of cams forward and gives it mechanical advantage to boost you forward, not up, but forward into the next stride. And the crazy thing is compared to regular running, it feels sort of like running combined with working an elliptical trainer. It's, yeah. flo it's floaty. It's like we the, all it's like the powder skiing equivalent of running. We've all been able to to run in it at this point and it's it it um I want to it doesn't feel like normal running in some ways. It feels like a different experience, very very bounding. I I mean I we we sent you a lot of feedback written yeah, but um I love it. You know right? one of the one of the things that that I enjoyed about it was how that heel felt. Uh, um, you know, landing down onto that back ellipsis for me was very, um, it is very soft the, there. And, and you can go into kind of some of the refinements you're making. The models we had were early, were, are still prototypes. So there's things oh. that are being refined, you know, for us, we had some transitions, you know, the, the changes in the hinge position of the hinge, all that stuff, okay. um, that felt, uh, like they did need some refinement, but, sure. um, but the, the heel landing was, was really nice. And the fit of the shoe. I love the fit of the shoe those are I the two things you, that were that stood out i have to give you kudos, kudos on the fit that all three of us nine ten and nine and a half were able to fit into the same nine uh, size nine shoe the upper is is phenomenal i'm very impressed with that design it's it's very much toe shaped or to a foot shaped you get you did a great job with that i'd be really curious len if if you did and so yep I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'd be very curious, by the way. Um, again, one of the things that we all noticed is that heel, how it really does a great job of unloading that rear foot. I'd be very curious for you to do, to contract someone to do research, to look at how that changes plantar pressures. That's one of the big things that rocker shoes looked at. Yeah. And the reason a lot of post-operative boots are rockers is because research has shown that rocker shoes significantly reduce plantar pressures, which is great if you have ulcers of the foot, sometimes even stress reactions can reduce. I'd be very curious for you to put your finalized version, even some of the prototypes and look at that. And again, like I said in the email, like you might find a whole new population that would really benefit from this footwear type, like runners, yes, but also like for sure, orthopedic wise, because well, it's really good. It's, it's, it's really well done for that population. And, I think, you know, we, we, we don't, the only study we've done is, is the reduced systemic oxygen consumption right. study, but we would, we would love to do some sort of a study directed at injury reduction or prevention, you know, or recovery right. to, to, to show that this actually helps, but we have some anecdotal um, evidence in the form of people who've worn the shoe, including one woman who called me just days before the marathon we were both going to in the DC uh, Marine Corps marathon. And she called me up hopping mad, you know, that she had a stress fracture in her lower left fibula. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm literally holding your shoe right now. I just got it out of the box. It was the EMA version. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she said, well, bring it, you know, I'll be at the airport. I'm going to watch the marathon, watch my husband run the marathon, you know, while I sit on the sidelines, she was not happy. And um, I gave her the shoe at the airport and three days later of sightseeing, she calls me up and says, I'm going to run the marathon, you know? And I'm like, what about the stress fracture? This very painful, you know, stress fracture. And she said, I've been walking all over town and I feel pretty good. So I'm going to give it a try, you know? And, and she did and had an okay time, you know, and um, didn't hurt, you know? So, so there really is something going on about the, you know, the normal overshoots of, of, of energy from the heel in and the toe off are being attenuated 
you know, but the area under the curve is still the same. It's just that now it looks more like a bread loaf mm -hmm. instead of the Tetons. That, that's yeah. what I'm most interested in, actually. Uh, if you could go into it a little bit. You don't have, um, I mean, obviously the, the only study was the oxygen one, but you alluded earlier to a little bit of maximizing the amount of potential energy that you can create into kinetic energy and moving it forward and not vertically. And with the shoe and the design of it, like you're right, this is very rigid with your hand, you're not going to be able to compress this. Sure. But with your body weight times whatever amount you're landing with, you will be able to compress it and you will be able to, to get something out of it. Um, but the transition through that midfoot to the forefoot, that's also what I'm most interested in as well is why so much forefoot flexibility at the hinge. If you're loading so much through here and loading so much through here, because in my in theory, I, I think of more like that rocker design where you're, you're almost loading a spring and then rolling off and maximizing, again, that potential energy and trying to snap off with a certain amount of kinetic energy um, while still keeping things forward um, and not making it too boundy. And um, it has nothing to do, like, there was a couple moments when running in the shoe. I mean, obviously, we're not all, all talking our experience or anything right now, but I noticed there were certain moments when I would land and I'm like, oh, this is really nice. And then other moments where I feel like I just didn't quite hit it. And it's, it feels like the very specific point at which I have to land and push from in that forefoot specifically. And I don't know if it's the forefoot flexibility. I don't, I don't know if it's the mechanics, but I think it'd be interesting it's like from a study of, perspective to um, look it's at timing vertical oscillation and to even maybe even like you were mentioning steady state like blood lactate threshold things like that um sorry i don't mean to go on a rant but it yeah. was just it's it's midsole geometry and we're, we're talking energy we're talking physiology um i do come from an exercise physiology background so um like it i yeah i tune into that and yeah sorry but no, no pun intended that he's tuning into it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, 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 okay so so there's only a couple pairs of these pre-production shoes and i didn't pick it up in the in the in the drafting phase um but the the timing is off on the forefoot it's mm -hmm. it's and it's a little bit like a it's a little bit like a car engine you know or a motorcycle engine it that you don't want to be um too retarded you know, in, in the timing. And that's what it is. You want to be a little more advanced. And so this one, for example, or, right. or, you know, or this version are doing a better job and we're going to change that yeah. in the next, in the next um, um, samples we get back and, you know, we can right. get you one of those, but what I, what I want to, and you, what you might find out, Matt, when you get the next pair that are sitting in the snow in South Bend, <laughs> Um, what you might find out is that the feel will be different. The feel will be different because the timing is different. And, and it's not critical. It's not critical. You just have to build it right. You know, once, once, once you get it where it needs to be, it'll work for anyone who puts that size on. You know, and here's, here's, here's actually a funny piece about it. The, okay, so we really worked hard on the anatomic last to get it where we wanted it. Yeah. Um, because as you're coming off of the forefoot suspension, okay, what we really wanted was for the, the, the big toe to not be the big toe to not be displaced at all. Okay. We wanted you to be able to come off the, the suspension and basically pole vault off of that big toe. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you're feeling when you say that it feels good, but why does it feel good? Well, look, if you build a last, you've got, you've got half the problem solved, but where are the metatarsals and where are the calcaneus? Okay. Look, look at all these little marks. I went to the beach. I went to Indiana Dunes beach and I walked around with my last and a, and a bucket and a towel. And I would look at people and say, Hey, you look like you might wear a size nine. Do you wear a size nine <laughs> running shoe? Yeah, I do. And I measure your feet. Big kudos. And, and that's so amazing I got, you know a whole collection of calcaneus first and fifth metatarsal measurements and that's how we figured out where to put it so, so that part of it's good this is technically for the for the, my research students listening this is technically random sampling correct you're walking around on the beach going can i can i measure your foot <laughs> i also 
Yeah. If, also, if you live in Indiana, Indiana, and you go to this shoe is made for you too. Like you are really in the sample. That's amazing. A micro, a micro population. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Although there were a bunch of awesome. Illinoisans there that day, so I don't know. Oh, uh, you can <laughs> just throw them the sample. You know, I'm from Wisconsin, so they don't, oh, their their feet don't feel. matter. I know how you feel. And I moved here three years ago from Illinois. <laughs> 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 Oops, just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah. well, this I is know. awesome. I've heard, all, um, I've heard all the acronyms. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they they exist. Yes. We'll talk about those later. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is great. I I had a blast talking about some of the research behind this shoe. Um, Len, is there before we wrap up? Is there anything else that you want to share about kind of what's going on right now? You know, we're going to release this in the next couple of days. So if there's anything that you want people to go and check out. Um, or people to think about. Um, we know, obviously, your Kickstarter is still live. Maybe give an update on that. Maybe um, whatever else you want to share, and then we'll wrap things up. The Kickstarter runs 60 days. Uh, we broke through our goal in the first week. Um, so it goes through March 26th. And normally, uh, a full carbon shoe costs a couple hundred bucks. Uh, this is new since we, we talked with you guys last. We're selling it for $99 on the Kickstarter. Mm. And, and the reason is we're, we're, we're using this event as a, a, a one-time, you know, opportunity to put this on as many people's feet as possible, you know, and not just you guys, but your moms and your sisters and, you know, your, your father-in-law. We, we, even when you're standing still in this, this isn't just for runners. Even when you're standing still in this, the suspension you know, try it, try it, have, you know, put it on somebody's foot and then watch them. Even trying to stand still, it's moving up and down all the time. And, and the more that the suspension is absorbing and releasing energy, the less you have to. So this is, we're really on a mission to reduce, you know, pain and fatigue for people uh, who walk on their feet all day long, all week long. You know, it, it's, it, I mean, look at this. Look at this. We're, you know, we've got, we've got, oh, nice. boots, you know, that, that work beautifully, nice with suspension, you know, so, so that's in the future for us. Well, actually I do have one last question that somebody, uh, one of our followers asked, they asked, have you ever had, like you brought up hiking shoes. It made me think of it. Anything ever get caught in the ellipses anyways, you know, that kind of thing. Like if a rock, if a rock kind of like slid yep. in there or something. Yep. yep. The answer is all the time, okay? Um, I mean, it's a big hole in a shoe. What's it going to do, you know? <laughs> I've run, I run cross-country, you know, runs, trail runs through stream beds. Um, and, you know, if anything gets in here, I mean, it's always dusty. You can always get a little dust out of it. But anything that goes in here rolls right back out, you know? And because it's flexing, it tends to shed, you know, any mud or debris really quickly. And then people say, well, does the hinge load up, you know? And actually, you can see it's pretty clean. And these have been worn by a lot of people in the yeah. winter, even. Um, yeah, yeah. Even cleaner. Um, and so you got you to gotta remember, the hinge is only open as you're leaving the ground. And it's only open for a fraction of a second, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and then you're landing again. And, and so, no, these, these, don't really, um, these don't really, you know, hold any dirt. Here's the last point I forgot to mention, though, something one of you said. Um, you know, we're looking at these, these ellipses, these carbon ellipses. If I, if I go to pinch my fingers, okay, in the middle and right where the heel, center of the heel is, there's only about 11 millimeters of material between the bottom of your heel and the top of the suspension. We're trying to put every bit of force coming out of you into the suspension to, to increase the efficiency. And because what you're riding on is, is the carbon and not foam, the life on these things is double, double what you would expect to get out of a running shoe. Exactly. Yeah. What's, not, what's not to like? Yeah. <laughs> For 99 bucks right now. I know. Too. So, well, this is great. Thanks, Len. And it's just been, uh, if, if, you know, we've all been able to wear this, we'll probably put something out on our written page too about our experience, just so that people can read it as well. Um, for the people who like to consume 
media that way. Um, but it's a, it's certainly a unique experience to run in, in the shoe, to have full suspension. If you've transitioned from like a, you know, a hardtail bike to a full suspension bike, like there's a difference in what it feels like. And that's, it's definitely a difference in the running. And, and, and pre- when, when full suspension came to cross country racing. Okay. You know, the, the times went down. The times on, on various courses went down when suspension came to cross country racing, but the bikes were heavier. So why would the time go down? It's because of all the work the suspension is doing that the rider doesn't have to. Mm. Well, we're finally putting that into a shoe. Yeah. That's so it's, it's totally something new. This is not, uh, you know, you're not getting another shoe that's looking like something else. Mm-hmm. And so we, we really appreciate you sending us stuff to try out and to think, think about. Um, yeah. It's been really fun well, to think it, and talk. And, and all these things, all these kinds of studies that you guys are talking about, those are in our future. And I would love to do those. Yeah. You know, that's fantastic. I, there's, there's, there's more secrets left undiscovered in this thing than I know right now. Right. Right. Yeah. It'll be fun to see, see things roll out as they do. And um, we really appreciate you giving us time as well to talk about this stuff and being open about kind of what the process has been like in research. So you're, 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 you've been nothing but friendly. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Take Thanks, care. Friend. Take care.